um, uh, functional cure is defined today as a clearance of HBS antigen um, in serum. Uh, and uh, uh, this is associated with uh, uh, undetectable HBV DNA and normal transaminase. Um, uh, Anti-S uh, antibody seroconversion uh, is not mandatory for, for the definition. So um, a confirmed HBS antigen negativity uh, at several time points, several weeks apart is sufficient to uh, uh, to define a functional cure. Now today, uh, with the currently available drug, uh, which are mainly nucleoside analogs and, and uh, for a long-term treatment or uh, a short-term interferon therapy, um, the, the rate of functional cure is around 10% uh, in selected population of patients treated with interferon. Uh, or in patients undergoing at least five years of nucleoside analog therapy. So this is uh, the best that we can achieve today with a currently available drug. So the majority of patients uh, have to continue the treatment because only 10% maximum can be cured. Uh, So this is a, a, an important uh, question because uh, nucleoside analogs and uh, pegylated interferon have two different modes of action. So uh, scientists and doctors uh, have investigated whether a combination uh, of two drugs with two different modes of action uh, would increase the rate of functional cure uh, in, in patients. Uh, so several uh, studies uh, have been performed uh, worldwide in, in Asia, in Western countries with different schedules of administration. So either with a lead-in uh, with uh, nucleoside analogs uh, or uh, with an add-on of interferon um, or a de novo combination therapy. So in all the three scenarios, uh, so the three type of combination, um, no, there was no study that could show that uh, the combination could increase the rate of, uh, of functional cure. So today, the, there is no recommendation uh, to treat in clinical practice uh, patients in co with a combination of nucleoside analogs and interferon. So the combination uh, therapy has to be done in clinical trials, in clinical studies, so that we can learn more about uh, how to combine, whether there are some predictive factors uh, uh, that would uh, help to identify the best population that could receive a combination uh, of the two drugs. Uh, outside of, stud of clinical studies, uh, uh, there is no recommendation to, uh, to combine the two, the two treatments. So uh, to, again, a very exciting and important uh, a question because uh, uh, today we have many drugs, uh, many new antivirals um, or immune modulators that are uh, under clinical development in, for, for hepatitis B. Uh, um, some of them are in phase 1B or in phase 2A or even phase 2B clinical trial. So this is very exciting. Now, um, the, today these drugs are, are used in combination, uh, not in monotherapy. I don't think there is any drug that is developed for the treatment of HB in monotherapy. So the most encouraging um, um, results uh, uh, today are, um, yeah, are, are really uh, the uh, combination of uh, uh, nucleoside analogs, capsid assembly modulators, and uh, siRNA. Uh, that's one, one point. Another point is the combination of nucleoside analog and antisense oligonucleotides. Uh, 
Another very interesting combination is a combination of um, entry inhibitor, uh, the, the Mircridex, which is developed for hepatitis delta, uh, in combination with interferon and with uh, tenofovir. In that situation, uh, we may see a functional cure of hepatitis B. Um, and another very interesting uh, combination is a combination of nucleic acid polymers with tenofovir and pegylated interferon. And it was published that almost 40% of patients can achieve functional cure. So we have several combination strategies that show very promising results. So we would need to, um, to wait for uh, results of phase three clinical trial. Uh, the phase three clinical trial I have not started yet, but they will start very soon. So this is really promising. I think um, the, the question is, is really where we should aim to go for, for the treatment of hepatitis B. So um, if we uh, are able to, to, to achieve functional, uh, functional cure uh, in, in a very significant proportion of patients, it's difficult to say what number, but let's say at least 20 or 30% of patients, which would be already uh, um, a great achievement, I think the, the overall aim would be not only to treat chronic hepatitis uh, patients, but also patients with chronic infection. So the, the, the overall objective would be to treat all HBS antigen carriers. Um, obviously, this will need a step-by-step -step evaluation. First, we are treat we are treating chronic hepatitis B patients. And then if it works well, and it is confirmed uh, um, in phase three clinical trial and outside of clinical trial, then we will have to, to treat the uh, chronic infection so, so that we can, uh, in the end, treat all the HBS carriers. So, so this is the, uh, the real aim that we want to, to, to achieve in, to, to have a, a major impact uh, on the public health burden of hepatitis B. Thank you.